I would say the times that it, it probably would not be best to talk about it is one when you've gone without having sex for quite a while yeah. and you're feeling frustrated. frustrated. Thank you for joining us for the Blended Kingdom Families podcast. This podcast is for blended families, the people who love them, and anyone who just wants to improve their marriage and family relationships. BKF exists to break the cycle of divorce, equip marriages, and unite blended families with the truth of God's word. It is our hope that today you will receive biblical guidance and practical resources that will bring unity and peace to create your thriving, healthy home. Let's jump in. Hey guys, welcome back to the BKF Podcast. We are super pumped you are here with us, continuing our series on sex. We're just going to have so much fun with this. Yes. Can we sing a song first? Let's talk about sex. I knew you were, I knew you were going there. Let's talk about you and me. Anyway, I, I just think it's going to be fun. Uh, if you haven't already, take an opportunity, like, share, comment, send us your feedback on this. We'd love to just get a take of how you're absorbing this. Yeah. Uh, but we talked about frequency last week. Yep. And now we're going to move into how do you talk about sex? And, yeah. and, and, and that may seem really trivial in this. Like, mm-hmm. well, it's my partner or my spouse. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to, it's not that yeah. easy mm-hmm. because we know that there's a lot of other things behind it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I know, and we struggled with this in our marriage yeah. at certain, in certain seasons where, um, it's just hard to talk about it. And I think, um, I think just, you know, from a woman's perspective, um, and you know, everybody comes from a different background. Maybe some of you have experienced, um, you know, sexual trauma growing up or mm-hmm. in a previous marriage, um, there may have been, been some things that happened that are uncomfortable, but um, for anybody, but, um, you know, I know, you know, for us, that was one thing that I wasn't comfortable talking mm-hmm. about, uh, for a while where with you, it was, you were very comfortable talking about it. And so, you know, I know it was, it was something we talked about and we knew we had to get past in yeah. order to get to a certain place, um, in our sexual intimacy. And so, um, yeah, I think it's, it's something that a lot of couples struggle with. Uh, a lot of couples struggle with, you know, um, I don't like this, but my spouse likes this, you know, Mm -hmm. or even, you know, certain sexual positions Mm -hmm. and things like that. And so you guys really today, we just kind of want to, um, put air back in the room and and say, you know, you're not alone. There are so many couples Mm -hmm. that experience that. And there are a lot of couples that reach out to us, um, and ask about that stuff. And so we just kind of want to break that down today. It makes me laugh because one of the things that I would, I would, uh, I want to put a, like an asterisk disclaimer, uh, it's usually not best to talk about these things right before you have sex. Yeah, meaning, this meaning, is good. You know, yes. the first thing I would say when it comes to communication is, is like, when do we talk about this? It's generally not right before. Yeah. Uh, because there, there needs to be a certain disarming of mm-hmm. like, you know, how do we have this conversation knowing that, you know, everybody has sexual desires. Sure. They have likes, they have dislikes, they have, you know, Whatever that may be, the problem is 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 kind of putting it out there because even when you got married, you didn't get a book of like, okay, give me your sexual past, tell me the things you liked, didn't like, what was trauma created, what was what was this, what was that. You, yeah. you just didn't do that. That's yeah. just not a it's not a marriage part. It's not a marriage ritual that people do. Yeah. So, but at certain points, you're going to want to know these things. Yeah. So, when is the best time to even start talking about this? You know, I think honestly, it's you know, just from a therapist perspective, I think things like these should, should, should always be talked about before marriage. I think that's always, that's always a good place to start. You know, when you know that, you know, you're engaged, you're getting married and, you know, talking about what that's going to look like. Cause some people may come into the marriage, a virgin and not have had sex at all. Some may, like you said, have had a sexual, have Mm -hmm. a sexual history. And so that's going to play a lot into what, um, you know, your sex life or your intimacy is going to look yeah. like. And so, you know, I think it's important that you, you come with those things before, you know, I know, um, you know, when we got married, I had obviously been married before. Mm-hmm. And, and so we knew like, you knew there was a sexual, yeah. you know, a, a history there. And so well, I wasn't an angel either. So, well, you know. yeah, you know, I mean, and then some of us have those past where we had sex before marriage. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I, I think it's important to talk about that. And, you know, and if you have experienced any type of trauma sexually, you know, whether 
as a child or whatever. And, and that's, um, you know, unfortunately that was a part of my past. So yeah. that was something that we t- had to talk about, um, because there were a few things that, so to speak, were a little triggering. Yeah. And so, um, we had to get past that. But once we got past that, mm-hmm. it definitely changed our intimacy, um, and the way that we communicate about sex. But I love that you said, talk about sex after having sex. It definitely does yeah. break down the barrier and I, it, it makes it, um, it can make it an opportunity where you're just more open to receiving feedback and talking about the things that you like. Hey, I like it when you do this. I don't like it when you do this. I would say the times that it it probably would not be best to talk about it is one when you've gone without having sex for quite a while and you're feeling frustrated. Frustrated. You know, if one spouse is like, man, I really, I'm really, you know, excited and I really want to have sex tonight. And the other spouse like, isn't, and then you're, you decide to have this conversation. It's probably not going to end well. It generally doesn't go on a good trajectory. No, 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 no. Or, you know, maybe it's, um, you know, uh, talking about it, you know, if a lot of life groups will do Bible studies surrounded around Mm -hmm. marriage and intimacy. So maybe it's with other like-minded couples who, um, you know, you're doing a study on that or a marriage conference. You know, we also talk about sex therapy as well. There are therapists who work with couples that really struggle in this area. Yeah. No, I I, I cannot be stressed enough. If if you're if you've missed the frequency side, uh, which is what we talked about last week, yeah. having the communication around it if you're not having sex is, is, is just a disaster. Yeah. It really is. Post, after you've had sex, it's it's great. It's almost like a, uh, my male brain calls it like a regrouping or like, <laughs> let's have a table session about how that went or what we could change or that probably not, probably not the way. Uh, and I think men and women could probably address this differently. Sure. So, you know, First of all, men are a little bit more likely to be like, hey, let's talk about, um, and I don't want to use the word critique, but mm-hmm. but that's kind of what we're doing. We're, we're going, hey, let's let's talk about this and what could have gone better and what, mm-hmm. what I like, didn't like. Yeah. Women, on the other hand, may be a little bit more timid about that because mm-hmm. um, they don't want to, uh, uh, you know, fracture the fragile male ego, which is sadly a real thing. Um, so what's the best way... Let's just go this from two different angles. Mm-hmm. I'll ask you, what is the best way a husband can come to a wife and say, hey, this happened. It was great. Yeah. But uh, I'd like to try X, Y, Z, or mm-hmm. I really like this yeah. and I didn't like this. Mm-hmm. You know, how do women prepare for that and how to, how to have that conversation? You know, I think it's um, one, I think from either side, I think you have to go in just prayerful about that conversation because, you know, as, as a woman, sometimes criticism we can take that right the right way or we can take it the wrong way. Yeah. And so I think just, um, you know, anytime a husband is coming to his wife and they're like, hey, I didn't like this. I, I call it the sandwich method. Like you like something, you didn't like it, you like it. The critique, you know, like you give them something good, you give them yeah. something that could be done better and then you end with something good. And so, um, you know, from a women's perspective, I think that that's one way that a husband can come at it. Um, but, you know, I think just being sincere in your words and how you approach it, delivery mm. is everything, yeah. um, especially with women. And so how you, um, initiate that conversation and, um, you know, in your heart behind it, you know, you know, your spouse and we, you know, Scott and I always, I'm, I'm always believing the best in you. Like Mm -hmm. whatever you come to me with, like, I'm believing that you're coming to with me coming to to me with it, with the purest yeah. heart. And, um, and then it's important to you. And I think as women, we need to be open to that. We need to be open to hearing what our husbands are saying, because, um, because they want to f- just as much as they want to fulfill our physical needs. We want to be able to do that mm. for them as well. So I think we have to be open to that feedback, um, and understanding, you know what, my husband is coming at this, uh, is coming to me with this, um, in, in the most sincere and, you know, um, honest and mm. love loving way and just having that grace for them. Cause it could be hard hard for the husband. Um, you know, especially if he's dealing with a wife that maybe is very defensive. I know I've been there Mm -hmm. before. Um, that's something that we've had to overcome, but, um, you know, just laying that down for a second and be like, you know what, I'm really hearing what you say. And what I'm hearing you say is that, you know, you, you want to enjoy this more. Mm -hmm. And as your wife, like, I want you to enjoy that more. Yeah. And I think delivery is everything. And and you said that a hundred percent correctly. So husbands, if you're listening to this and you want to have those conversations, um, maybe preempting those conversations with like, maybe a, I was just thinking like off the top of my head, like, Hey, maybe send a text and be like, Hey, can we talk about sex tonight? <laughs> you know, just so they can kind of in their mind go, okay, let's, let me start thinking about this. So it's not like a, uh, I think a lot of times if you come across real aggressively, 
the defensiveness kind of kicks up mm-hmm. because that, again, that's that's a high value for a wife. Mm-hmm. It's a high value in her ability and and her desire to please you. So if you're critiquing that, or you're trying to improve that or change it, mm-hmm. they can become very defensive. So maybe preempting that with a little message saying, "Hey, can we talk about this?" Mm-hmm. Or "Hey, I, you know, I really liked when you did this, and really would can we try this over here?" Yeah. Um, and then I think it's not necessarily the one thing I would point out too is don't question. You don't have to question the motives behind this. This yeah. is not necessarily like I want you to do this because my ex, you know, wife or ex spouse or ex girlfriend or they did that, so I want you to. Yeah. Uh, I think it's more like, hey, I think we can enjoy this together. Mm-hmm. So don't worry about the the origin, so to speak, as much as it is like, hey, I just want to enjoy this together. Yeah. Well, and I think from you know a wife, if if you're going to your husband and you know maybe there's something that doesn't feel good to you or you're not enjoying it, um, you know, how can women you know, sort of, sort of reverse the question, you know, how can women come to their husband without, again, shooting down the ego, um, you know, a men's mega need is respect. So doing it in a way where they still feel respected and honored, um, and not like they're doing something wrong or doing something that's hurting you or, um, you know, um, maybe shaming even, so to speak. Yeah. I I think, I think my gut answer would be, you know, men take, usually take direction pretty well. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, Hey, you know, you're doing it X, Y, Z. I need you to do it uh, Z, Y, X. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like, just, just, just let me, let me just a change. A little to the right. Let me change a little your, to the left. Let me change your tune here and everything will work in harmony. Uh, because men do have as equal strong desire to please their wife. Right. Uh, again, I think in good, healthy marriages. Now, if, if, if you're a guy and you're listening to this or, or if you're a wife and maybe your husband doesn't have that aim to please you, then there are there's some therapy that needs to take place. Absolutely. Because men generally in healthy marriages have strong desires to please their wives. Mm-hmm. They may not have a roadmap. And believe me, your roadmap is a lot more challenging than our roadmap. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't given that critique or feedback, it's like, listen... Um, I, I need you to do, or would you consider doing it this way? Or, yeah. hey, let's try it this way. I think mm-hmm. I will enjoy this a lot more. Yeah. Healthy men are going to be like, absolutely. Yeah. Let's try that again right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, so, think it, I think any in any marriage, if one spouse is doing it just to please them spe- themselves and not their spouse, there's definitely some issues that need to be yeah. worked out. Intimacy in marriage and sex, it was created for both of you to have pleasure. It was created yeah. for both of you to enjoy. And God wants that. That's why he created it. He created it for both of you and not just one over the other. And so I love that you pointed that out yeah. because I think there's a lot of people in marriages that are... Um, they are, there are unhealthy and yeah. that there are things like that that are going on. Well, and again, the, the concept of communication, this is not one of those things that is going to come natural to you. Yeah. Uh, and I think people, if you're listening to this and if you've made it this 12 minutes into this podcast so far, uh, and you're probably like sweating bullets, you're like, okay, this is not me. Yeah. You know, I just don't know how to talk about these things. Don't feel bad. Yeah. This is not something that was encouraged to you, you know, early on to say, mm-hmm. hey, feel free to talk about sex as much as you want, especially yeah. with your spouse. Yeah. Um, it's just, it hasn't been one of those things. Um, it should be in our vows. Like I vow to openly talk about intimacy with you um, yeah. because man, what a great marriage that can create. Yeah. But if you're not one of those people, don't feel bad. Uh, this needs to be learned. It needs to be practiced. Yeah. So the more opportunities you take to be like, Hey, let's have a feedback session here. Yeah. Let's talk about this. And maybe yeah. it's one of those things you, you can't do via, you know, maybe you have trouble with your words or something mm-hmm. and you can maybe shoot that out in a text to them and be like, yeah. Hey, let's talk about this. I'd really like to try this. Or you guys, you know, we have some great friends, Dave and Ashley Willis, who have the naked marriage podcast. Ooh. They have a book, um, the naked marriage book, naked and healthy. They have, they are, I call them the sex experts and they are absolutely amazing. And maybe it's you two getting together and listening to a podcast on Christian yeah. marriage and sex. Like there are things that you can do with your spouse. Maybe even it's a conference um, tailored to, um, you know, sex and, and Christian marriages and things like that, um, that you can attend together where you guys can both listen and, and have conference conversation about it in open dialogue. Like, Hey, what did, what did you think about that? Or what do you, what did you think yeah. about when they said this? And it can start the conversation. We know that the conversation can be awkward and weird. And that's why we want to have this podcast and have this exact conversation is because we want to be able to break down that barrier. Again, the enemy wants to do, to put a, drive a wedge in anywhere in our marriage to create division and inti- intimacy is, is a big place. Like, I mean, that is a place where he does mm-hmm. it and wants to drive you and your spouse further apart from each other. So, um, so again, you guys, you know, the more that you can talk about it, the more that you understand, um, 
you know, the ticks of your spouse, what they like, what they don't like, what's comfortable for them, what's not comfortable for them. Um, you guys can, the better that you guys are going to have, um, a more pleasurable and more, um, joyous, um, exciting, so to speak, uh, you know, yeah. sexual intimacy together. And again, that's, that's what God wants. Yeah. I love that you brought up, you know, the, the people that we know and respect so much. Yeah. Uh, Dave and Ashley, um, the Naked Marriage Podcast, they're part of the EXO uh, network. Because if this is a topic, we don't talk about sex all the time on, on our BKF podcast, because yeah. we talk a lot of things about blended families and all yeah. that stuff. But sex is so important, and we want to point you in those right directions. We yeah. want to point you toward opening conversations up. Yeah. Uh, and there, there is. There's great resources. There's great even technology. There's technology out there that, that spurs conversation. You yeah. and I were talking about an app not too long ago that, yeah, that, that asks that the, ask the questions to ask each the other. Spout. Yeah. yeah, like they ask a question, and like you have to answer it, and your spouse has to answer it, and yeah. then you see which, which other answers are answers are, um, you know, and, and, and yeah, and there's so, so many different, um, resources out there and biblical and Christian yeah. resources out there. I know Ashley and Dave just did a, a podcast on, uh, sexual positions and, you know, different things yeah. like that. And so you guys, there is some good biblical stuff out there that can help you in your marriage. If this is an area, um, I don't want to say of weakness, but an area that you're struggling with. Yeah. And what we're really trying to do in this podcast is promote communication. Yeah. And so we, we talked about it from a few different areas of, you know, hey, how to communicate, maybe when to communicate. Mm -hmm. And if all of those things didn't get you there, we're going to point you to another resource that says this will kind of force you to communicate. Yeah. Like, hey, we're both going to listen to this podcast. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Or, hey, we're going to answer these questions and we'll talk about it. Uh, all of that is in the benefit of increasing the intimacy. And I, and I use intimacy here instead of sex increasing the intimacy in your marriage, because that is not just about the sexual side, it's about the emotional side. Mm -hmm. It's about all the different areas of intimacy that we've talked about many times. Yeah. Um, but communication is the key there. Yeah. And communication is what will lead to the frequency, which is what we talked about last week. So. Absolutely. Well, guys, thanks so much for joining in with us today. We hope that you've enjoyed it. We hope that this is... Um, tweak your interest to have better communication with your spouse when it comes to sex. Yes. So guys, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Be blessed in all that you do. Hey guys, so glad you were here with us today and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And you can find more resources from Blended Kingdom Families at blendedkingdomfamilies.com. Join us again next time as we hang out with more amazing podcast guests. And remember, nothing will be impossible with God.